All right, back to work, back to the grind. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Uh, today, we're going to take a look at Laravel's brand new defer function, which is incredibly cool. It allows you to execute uh, any bit of logic after a response has already been returned to the user. So you can imagine for any sort of uh, long running process uh, that doesn't merit being thrown onto a queue, or maybe you don't even have queues set up to begin with, uh, this would be incredibly helpful. Let me show you. I will open my editor and let's start within my routes file. So for our example, I've set up two dummy routes here. First up, the home page loads a welcome view, and that contains nothing but a simple, fancy, intricate, uh, amazing form that just makes a post request back to the home page. Okay, so if I were to switch back, that will hit this route, of course. So if I were to dump and say, hello, and if we give this a run, I'm using herd, so it should pop up, and it does. Everything's working great. All right, very cool. So you may know about terminable middleware. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But that's just a, a fancy term that means a middleware that runs after a response has already been prepared and returned to the user. So let's talk about that real quick before we move over to the defer function. If I were to open up my terminal, we could run PHP artisan make me a middleware, and I'll just call it example middleware. All right, so let's open that up. It's, of course, in our HTTP middleware directory. And yeah, this could be middleware that we apply globally, and it will run sort of like layers of an onion as a new request comes in, and the request makes its way to the core of your application, right? But maybe you didn't know that you can also add a terminate method, and this is going to do sort of the inverse. It's going to fire after we have reached the core, and now we are returning the response, right? That's why it's called a terminable middleware. Makes sense. So in this case, we get access to the request, but also the response because it's already been prepared. So I can grab that here. And yeah, just to demonstrate this, why don't we, uh, why don't we dump and we'll say the response status code was, and then we'll say response. And what is it? Get status code. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. So why don't we register this? We can open up the bootstrap slash where is it? Bootstrap slash app. Yeah. All right. And right down here with middleware, let's say middleware append to the global stack. And I will reference our example middleware class that we created. All right. So are we good? Are we all on the same page? All we've done is we've created a middleware that does nothing but dump something to the console after the response has already been returned. All right. And then we registered it with the global stack so that it will execute for every single page request that comes in. All right. So that means if I come back to Chrome and we reload this page, sure enough, our herd console uh, pops up and we can see that the terminating middleware did take place, which is really cool. And we got a 200 response code. All right. So why do I explain this? Well, I reference this because the new defer function makes use of this. Oh, ultimately, it's almost just kind of a, I don't know what you'd call it, a, a, an endpoint, an API, an abstraction on top of it uh, that allows us to hook in to one of these terminating middleware. I'll show you. Let's once again return to our routes file. And this time, let's imagine some kind of operation that takes a bit of time to complete. To start, I'm just going to sleep for four seconds, something like that. And then I'll say... A uh, time-consuming task complete, all right? In real life, you'd redirect somewhere. Well, of course, in real life, you wouldn't even sleep for four seconds, but this is a demo and you get the idea, right? Okay, so uh, let's return to Chrome and give it a run. All right, let's give it a go. One, two, long running process, finally completes four. There we go. And yeah, here I still have that example middleware running. So it shows us the response code. But yeah, you get the idea, right? That is way too long to make the user wait, especially in situations where whatever is taking place isn't overly urgent, right? There's just no reason to make the user wait for it. All right, so now I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, Jeffrey, weren't queues invented to solve this very problem? And the answer is absolutely. So now we have to figure out, well, should I use this defer function or should I use a queue? Uh, 
And how do we solve that problem? The, the answer is just, as always, sorry, I, I know you hate to hear this, but the answer is it just sort of depends, right? Uh, there might be situations where you want the logic to take place as quickly as possible without requiring that the user wait for it to finish. In those cases, use defer. Uh, there might be situations where the project you're building just doesn't warrant its own queue system. You don't want to figure that out. You don't want to set up a daemon. You don't want to register workers. You don't want to dispatch a job. Instead, a simple defer closure will do the trick. But yeah, in, in plenty of situations, you'll still stick with uh, dispatching jobs. Those are not going away. So don't worry about that at all. All right. So let's speed this up. First, though, and this is going to annoy me. So let's go to bootstrap slash app and comment out that example middleware. And that way we're not dumping every single time we reload the page. All right. Very cool. So now all I'm going to do here is wrap this in a call to defer. And it's a new global helper function. Uh, that ships with the latest version of Laravel 11. So if this is not available to you, run a composer update. All right. Now, how will we know when this completes? Well, why don't we do another dump here? We'll dump and say defer was called logic complete. All right. So let's switch back to Chrome. I'm going to submit this form, but I want you to notice how quickly we see that response message. Click and it's instant. Okay, so now we wait two, three, four, and there we go. Finally, uh, that logic resolves and we get uh, the dump there. Very, very cool. Okay, so yeah, you can imagine if you wanted to uh, fire off an email but you didn't want to queue it, you could throw it into a defer call like this. Let's say right here. Well, first, let's bring up the console and let's make a mail. And why don't we call it like welcome, something like that. Welcome mail. Let's open up welcome. And right down here, why don't for the contents, let's just use an HTML string. Welcome to our site. And that's it. Okay, so now I want to deliver this email to the user. Back to our routes file. We will comment out or delete sleep. And now I'm going to say mail. There it is. To, and I'll send it to myself, jeffrey at layercast.com. We're going to send a new welcome mail. All right, very cool. So let's give it a shot. I will reload the page. I'm going to click submit and notice it's instant. We immediately receive the response, even though we are dispatching an email that could take a couple seconds or so. So uh, because I'm using herd, I can pull up the mail tab here. And sure enough, we have the welcome to our site email. Yeah, that's very cool. And yeah, once again, in real life, if you were to wait for that mail to send, it could take a number of seconds. But now we can provide instant feedback to the user, which is cool. And actually, on this note, you know what I think would be cool is if the Laravel team offered some kind of defer method directly off of mail, and that would allow you to get rid of the closure entirely. And this would this would bring it in line with mail to queue. This delivers the, the email by throwing it onto a queue. Yeah, it would make sense. Maybe there's a defer option as well that throws it onto a delayed uh, callable. That would be neat. But yeah, at least at the time of this recording, uh, I don't think you can do that. So I'll bring it back. And this is what we get. But yeah, once again, you're not limited to email, of course. Uh, you can do anything that would take a little bit of time. If you're just updating a user record, then don't do that, of course. But if it's something where uh, we have to update a thousand different records in the database or recalculate uh, these statistics or metrics or something like that. Again, there's just no reason to make the user wait for that. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so now I want to wrap up by talking just a little bit about how this defer function lines up with the terminating middleware that we discussed at the beginning of the video. Let's have a look at the definition for defer. All right, so first step, it checks to see if a callback was provided. If not, it returns this collection uh, instance from the container. In our case, though, we did provide a callback. So instead, this is the logic that we trigger. So it returns a call to tap. And real quick, if you're not familiar with tap, tap is going to return whatever the first argument you pass to it. 
So in this case, it looks like we create a new deferred callback instance, and then we pass our closure to it. And yeah, that's what's going to get returned here. But before it gets returned, it passes that deferred callback object, in this case, uh, to this second closure here. And it looks like uh, it gets appended to a deferred callback collection. All right, so we're just appending to a collection of things or closures that have been deferred. Okay, but yeah, I, I still don't get it. At what point does this hook into a terminating middleware? Well, let's have a look here. I'm going to open up the sidebar because to be honest, I can't quite remember what the name is. It's something related to deferred. Let's see if I can find it. Deferred callbacks, something like that. Good. Okay, I did find it. I was thinking I was going to have to splice this video together. But yeah, it's the invoke deferred callbacks uh, class or middleware. All right, so we have a middleware that Laravel provides, and it's called Invoke Deferred Callbacks. And look, it's a terminating middleware. So what does it do here? Well, it resolves that collection out of the container, the collection of deferred callbacks. And as long as the status code from the response is less than 400, it invokes them. And as we've learned, that deferred callback has an invoke method here that actually triggers your function that you created. In our case, it's the function where we fire off the email. All right, so now we've learned something new, haven't we? We will only invoke that function if the response code is uh, either successful or some form of redirect, right? So we know that 200 responses are different variations of good to go, right? 300 response codes are different variations of uh, like redirection and things like that. It's only when we get into the 400s and the 500s that things went wrong. So the way this works out of the box, and by the way, you can configure this if you want uh, through a method call. But yeah, the way it works by default is, well, if it's anything less than 400, you're good to go. But if it's not, we won't execute any of that code at all. So let's try this out. Let's go back to our routes file. So let's do this. Uh, two things. First, of course, if I were to throw an exception or something like this, well, then naturally something that's not a 200 or 300 status code is going to be returned, right? So if I were to refresh and click submit, we see the error. But more importantly, at no point was this logic executed. But yeah, further, if I were to force a particular status code, like, um, uh-oh, and then we return a, a 404 or something like that. Now, if we come back, submit it, yes, we see uh-oh. But further, notice if I open up herd, yep, once again, uh, we don't we don't execute that logic at all. And yeah, this is really important, so I want to drill this in. If I were to just immediately say die and dump, ha, huh? <laughs> and then let's say, Good. Yeah, if I come back and give it a shot now, well, of course, uh, we are going to run that callback. But yeah, once again, if we were to force a 400 or a 404 or something like that, and then we give it a go, yeah, it's never going to be triggered in the first place. And now we know why that's the case. And that's because the terminating middleware is actually checking the status code to determine whether or not to uh, whether or not to trigger that callback. It's very cool. All right, so let me know if you have any thoughts. Otherwise, I can think of a hundred different places that I could implement this into my projects, and I hope you will as well. Hey. Oh, what the? Isn't that cool? 